Welcome to this video for how to install the WAP app onto your mobile device. It is assumed that the WAP app has already been configured by your company's super user or their IT and that it's ready for end users to install. So assuming that's all happened, to install the app as an end user, you're going to need to have logged into the desktop, which I've got here ready. And you'll also need to have your mobile device to hand, which I've got here. This video is gonna be for Android but there is another video for Apple. So as an end user on your desktop, first of all, pop up to your personal settings at the top and you will see some QR codes in the middle. So if you're installing on an Apple, this is where you would come to. But on an Android device, we're going to focus on this middle one for now. So you've got a couple of options as an Android user. You can either copy and paste this URL into your web browser or if you have a QR code reader like I do on my device you can use that to scan the QR code. So I'm just going to line that up and from there you can browse to the website which is this website here so I'm taking it to the same place and then you can download the latest version. So I'm going to download this top one. Once it's downloaded, open the file and it will begin to stage the app. And then it will ask you to install. At this stage, it doesn't need any special access. One thing to note is once you get going, depending on what modules you're using, you will need to give it access to your camera that you will need anyway and also possibly your location if you're planning on using it for expenses. Once it's installed you can either just click done or you can open the app. So I'm going to click done for now to show you where it is. So if I now just go back onto my home screen and I can go and add it as a shortcut. So you'll have a new Sycom app. And the first thing you find is this message about getting connected. So it tells you a little bit of information. To start using this app, we need to get connected to your WAP server. The address can be found in the WAP web browser and we can scan the QR code or type it in. So I'm going to okay that message, but just for information, this is where we're now going to be looking again back at our desktop. So I'm gonna okay that. And it brings me straight back into the settings so at this point, you'll need your endpoint address. You can either copy that into this endpoint address here using this address here, or you can use the built-in QR code scanner to scan it. And that's where you're going to need to give your device permissions to take videos. So now I've got permission, I'm gonna scan this code here. So just make sure that it is the address on the endpoint address so this should match here and then you can save that if you wish there are some additional settings so things like whether you want it to remember you i'm going to tick no because i use this device between various users if you're the only one using the device then you'd probably be happy to keep that set on if you don't normally have to log in to your desktop if it just takes you straight in chances are you're using Windows authentication, so you could turn that on. Otherwise, you're always going to need to provide a username and a password when you log into the app. Your options in the syncing is how far in advance you want it to sync. So if you've got timesheets, for example, how many weeks of those do you want it to sync? Most people won't touch these syncing settings. It's just to let you know that they're there. And then this advanced option, this might be helpful, this timeout section, if you are a site that uses a costing module and you have a lot of project items or projects or maybe nominals, lots of items that need to come through. If you have, then you might want to increase it from the standard 60 seconds to 300 seconds. Because what's gonna happen when you do your sync is that lots of items are gonna get pulled through. And if it fails, it might be because it hasn't had enough time to get through all that list of projects that you've got access to. This reset database option, again, it's a more advanced setting. 
but if you are sharing your device with somebody else it's worth having this in mind if there have been changes or if you need to switch users you can use the reset database button to basically clear all the WAP data that's currently in your device. It does mean if you're using expenses and you've got favorite journeys, for example, those will also get cleared. Anything that's not been synced back to the website will be cleared. So in theory, you should only need to add your endpoint address and then save your settings. Once you've saved your settings, you're brought back to your home page. And in version 20, we've started to give you the version number at the top. Now I didn't mention version numbers at the beginning, but if you use the top right of your WAP desktop, you can see which version you're on. So I'm on version 20, which is 200 spot zero. And so I've got the equivalent WAP version. These links here will take you to the right version. So now you're ready to log in. And the first time you log in, you will need to do a full sync. So again, we tell you this, make it as easy as possible. Welcome, this is your first login. We'll need to sync the data. So we're gonna sync now. And again, this will take data. So you need to make sure you've got a data plan or you're on the Wi-Fi. Run through what it's syncing. And once the sync is complete, it takes you straight to your homepage ready to begin. So from here, you can either approve items in this screen or you can navigate up to your hamburger menu up the top left and from here you've got your options for entering items so further expense entry journeys holidays requisitions that will depend on what your modules are that you've got enabled and you can also see your version number in the bottom right so if you ever need to know what version of the app you are on it does say it on the home screen and it also says it in that menu item there and that's it, that's how you install the app as an end user.